welcome to today's yoga warm-up session. My name is Leslie Mars. I'm the flutes professor at Drake University located in Des Moines, Iowa, and I'm a certified yoga instructor. We'll be doing a yoga sequence that I created for flutists with original music performed and created by Canada's electro flute looper, Rosalind McPhail. For this session, it's a great idea to be in comfortable clothing, something that's easy to move around in. You may use a yoga mat or perhaps be outside on grass or inside on a low carpeted surface or rug. A few options include one, a hand towel, or perhaps a yoga strap kept by the mat. And two, a cushion, or perhaps a yoga block or blocks perceiving during the breathwork portions. I'll be demonstrating and coaching all of the movements and breathwork, and the dialogue will come to you all as a voiceover. The aim of this practice is to get everyone up with movements beneficial for the body and for flute playing. This will include stretches that are typical in yoga asana, as well as some muscle activation and warming, as this activation will both enhance flexibility and help prevent the tendency to overstretch. There will be short breathwork segments at the beginning and at the end of this practice. During this session, some foreign terminology will be used. These words will be defined or briefly explained. We will start with two. I hope you're ready. Number one, legato. Legato connotes smoothness and connection. Let's take this moment to reflect on how we're connecting with flutists all over the world. Number two, adagio. We generally think of adagio as meaning somewhat slowly, but taking the word in its parts, ad adagio, adagio means ease. Consider thinking of adagio as meaning with ease. Throughout this practice, keep in mind that we'll be connecting movement with breath, smoothly and with control, thus generally at ease. With that in mind, let's find our way to a comfortable seat. Seated, inhale through the nose. Take in deep belly breaths, lengthening the breath cycle with equal inhalations or inspirations and exhalations. If it feels right for you, blink the eyes closed. Root through the sit bones, drawing the tailbone down, elongating the spine. Let the head float up through the crown to the sky. As you breathe, take time to observe how you're feeling at this point in the practice. Your body, your mind. No judgment, just notice. Bring the hands to heart center in prayer positions with the thumbs just below the collarbone and sternum, the arms relaxed. Bow the head to the hands. I invite you to set an intention for today's practice. Let the chin float up, blink the eyes open, and release the hands to just above the knees. The first breathing practice is Dirga, or the three-part breath. And it has some similarities to what we already do as wind players as Dirga encourages increasing lung capacity. To guide this practice, place one hand on the low belly and the other on the low rib cage. Keeping the mouth gently closed, inhale through the nose, fill up to the low belly area and pause. Then add on to this air capacity, filling up to the rib cage and thoracic area, pause. Then add to the clavicular region along the collarbone and pause. Go out the way we came, release the air in the clavicular area, pause. Release the rib cage area, pause. Then release the air in the belly, squeezing out all of the air. And we'll do this sequence two more times. Inhale low and pause to the middle. Pause, top, pause. Release from the top and pause, middle and pause, and then squeeze out all the air in the belly. 
and then do this one more time. The engagement of the lower abdominal region will be implemented during the movement portion of this practice to support the spine, create space, and keep movements light with ease. Adagio. Eliminate the pauses and smooth out the sequence into equal inspirations and exhalations, approximately three seconds each direction, keeping this expanded lung capacity. The squeezing out of the air using the muscles of the belly differs from what we normally do as wind players, as we tend to keep the belly out to dramatically lengthen the out breath. Finally, engage the core and take in the same amount of air into the lungs, greatly expanding at the rib cage area in order to do so. Continue this regulated breathing style throughout the practice, breathing together with our flute community. If it feels comfortable, blink your eyes closed as you continue this breathing cycle. Breathing is the flow of the divine where the rhythms of life turn into each other, the eternal exchange. Pour one breath into the other, out breath, into the in breath, into the out breath. Awaken to equanimity, at peace in the play of opposites. For those with more experience in yoga, I encourage you to engage in ujjayi breathing, in which there is a little constriction at the back of the throat, producing a sound similar to what we hear as the sound of the ocean in a conch shell. With or without the constriction used for ujjayi, allow this regulated breathing to guide this and any yoga practice. This will inform you if you're overreaching in any way as the breath becomes jagged or irregular. Then you can move out of a, out a level in a pose or back off in the movement and return to even inhales and exhales. We will move with this slower breath pattern to keep ourselves moving legato and adagio. If your eyes are closed, go ahead and blink them open. Take the arms out to the sides with fingertips just touching the floor. On the next inhale, sweep the arms up. On the exhalation, bend gently to the right with the left arm extending and reaching toward the sky. Inhale back up, then bend over to the left. Now the right arm is reaching towards the sky. Inhaling up. Exhale right, feeling a nice stretch along the, the left side, inhaling up. Exhale left, feeling that bend on and stretch on the other side. One more round. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhale left. Then inhale up and here twist to the right, placing the right hand behind and the left hand over top of the right knee. Then inhale to unwind, twist to the left, left hand behind, right hand over the left knee. Inhaling up, twist to the right. Inhaling up, opposite side. So we begin the practice by taking each movement of the spine in its place, awakening the spine, preparing ourselves for movement later on in the practice. Exhale to the left, inhaling up, and bring the hands through heart center. Let's make this prayer position a little more active, peeling the finger and thumb away from each other, feeling the knuckle mounds of both hands pressing into each other. The next setup will be 
into tabletop and when you place the hands on the mat, you'll want the knuckle mounds to be bearing the weight with just the tiniest of lift or energetic lift out of the wrists. If you have particularly sensitive wrists, you can place the hands in fists with the thumb out front and place the fist on the ground. Moving into tabletop, if you have sensitive knees, feel free to double up the mat or you can take your towel in and place it below the knees. Place the hips directly beneath, um, the hips directly above the knees. The shoulders are directly above the wrists. Keeping your core engaged, inhale, leading with the sternum, letting the belly drop, and then exhale, arching the spine into cat. Inhaling into cow. Exhale, cat. Articulating the spine, inhale for a mini back bend. And exhaling, arching the spine. Then inhale to neutral. Take the knees wide, big toes to touch. Draw the bum down towards the heels. Coming forward on the forearms, rest the forehead on the mat into Balasana, Child's Pose. Child's Pose is a wonderful restorative pose. It can be taken at any time if you need a break in a yoga practice. It also completes the awakening of the spine as it completely elongates the spine. Take this cue from the mat into the real world. If sometimes we're on the computer too long, Sometimes we practice our food too long. And maybe we just need a break. Maybe you just take some child's pose after an hour of playing the flute or after a half hour of being on the computer. It feels so good. Next inhale, come to the forearms. Return to tabletop. Inhaling, take the right foot back, tucking the toes. Take the left arm out with the palms facing you in a spinal balance. If you're looking for a little more, perhaps raising the right heel to the level of the bum, keeping the core engaged so the spine is neutral. Finding a nice spinal balance to help us warm up here on our mats. Exhaling, return the hand, return to tabletop. Inhale, extend the left foot back, extend the right arm out to a handshake position, perhaps drawing that left heel up to the bum, finding a spinal balance on the opposite side. Just a little bit of challenge here. Inhaling. Exhaling, returning to tabletop. Tuck the toes. Take each hand and place it one palm forward. Inhaling, keeping the core engaged. Exhaling, shifting the hips up and back, finding your way to down dog. Gazing back at the feet, check to see that the feet are about hips distance apart, or perhaps you need a little wider. Placing the weight in the knuckle mounds, perhaps pedaling out the feet, starting a little stretch in the calves, maybe rotating the forearms out, finding some stillness, drawing the tailbone to the sky as well as drawing the bum down towards the heels and a little bit of opposing energy. And just breathe. Next inhale, shift forward so that the shoulders are over top of the wrists, keeping the core engaged into plank. You may need to adjust the feet to find the length and then exhale back into dog. Inhale forward again into plank. 
Exhale, dog, finding a little more warming here. One more time, inhale to plank. Exhale, dog. Inhaling, come to the balls of the feet and then tiptoe to the front of the mat. Bending the knees deeply. Keep the core engaged as well as in contact with the tops of the thighs. So the knees might be super, super bent here. Take each hand to opposite elbow, lowering the head, let it dangle in ragdoll. Perhaps take some swaying moments or some figure eights with your arms, whatever you feel like you need. And then eventually find some stillness. And if it feels okay in the hamstrings, begin lifting the bum towards the sky, just to the point of sensation. And just to the point to where your core is just about to release from the thighs. And breathe. Releasing the hands to the mat, roll the spine up, vertebra by vertebra, rolling the shoulders up towards the ears and back. Let's set up mountain pose. Check down at the feet so that they're parallel. You can parallel the blades of the feet together. In general, the heel is behind the second toe. As you Adjust to place the weight equally on the balls and the heels of your feet. You might come forward on the balls of the feet and then to the heels, eventually lowering this until you feel the weight equally on all four corners of the feet. The way I like to do it is to roll the balls of the feet in towards each other and then keep that then adjust so that I roll the outer ankles out, zipping the energy up the legs, drawing the tailbone down, drawing the low belly in and up, knitting the ribs in, inhaling the shoulders up to the ears, and then down the back so the shoulder blades are coming towards the waist, extending the hands, palms facing forward, to the mat, lots of energy. Ta-da! We are into Dasada, mountain pose. Check in with how you feel at this point in the practice. Consider how much you've already done. Like a mountain, you are awesome. From mountain pose at the top of the mat, sweep the arms in front, come through hands through heart center, bending deeply at the knees, take the hands to the mat, one at a time, lift up the ball of the left foot, slide the palm underneath so that the ball of the left foot is inside the palm of the hand, and do the same with the right, so that the ball of the right foot's in the palm of the hand and the toes can give your inner wrists a nice massage. Keep the core in contact with the thighs. Let the elbows splay out to the side. In gorilla pose, so awesome. And as we're here, feel free to extend the bum up to the sky, lengthening the hamstrings just a little bit more while you enjoy this inner wrist stretch. One at a time, release the hands. Inhaling, place the palms on the shins. Press them both against each other in a neutral spine, half lift. Inhaling. And exhaling, taking the arms out in front. And then inhale, 
Come all the way up, arms overhead. Exhale the arms down into heart center. With the hands at heart center, take a deep inhale, gradually lowering the tailbone down. So you want to lower it down, not out, lengthening the spine towards the heels. Coming into a, a kind of high chair pose, fierce pose, keeping the muscles of the legs engaged, shifting the weight over into the right foot, lifting the left ankle over top of the right knee. And if it feels good, you can sit down a little bit more into standing pigeon or figure four stretch. Find a place across the room that isn't moving. Take your gaze there in this nice one-legged balance and a mild hip opener. A little bit of a challenge here. And it's okay if you wobble. It's all right. Find your way back. And then release, shake it out. Setting up on the opposite side, hands to heart center again. Gradually lowering the tailbone down, keeping the quads, the glutes totally engaged, spine is neutral. Shifting the weight into the left foot. Cross the right ankle over top of the left knee. Finding that place to gaze across the room. If you need to take the arms out to the side for a better balance, that's fine. One-legged balance has challenged us strength-wise and mentally as we focus. And release, shake it out. Widen the stance so that the heels are in, the, the balls of the feet are out. And in this case, we're going to lift the right ear to the sky. Now you may be feeling like, hey, my left ear is going towards my shoulder. But the aim is to get more stretch in the right side of the neck through the shoulder. So think about lifting that right ear to the sky. Feeling a nice long stretch. Next inhale, lift the head up. Adjust to lift the left ear to the sky. Feeling that stretch move over to the left side of the neck. Coming up. Lift the back of the head up to the sky. So the head will come forward, but really feel like you're lifting from the back of the head up. And then lifting the head up, lift the forehead up to the sky. So the head will come back a little bit, but you just feel a nice stretch along the front of the neck, directing the energy through the forehead. Return the hands to heart center, drawing the tailbone down again, coming through a wide-legged chair to Malasana or Yogi Squat. And perhaps that's as far as you go, a little more of a hip opener, or perhaps you can go to the level in which the elbows are inside the knees or to where the bum comes down further. Just enjoying this. Take any movements that you feel would benefit you at this time or find some stillness. Then gently and mindfully find your way to the mat. Setting up so that you're sitting about midway on the mat, soles of the feet are down, hands are behind the thighs. 
one at a time, lift up the left foot so that the shin is parallel with the ceiling, then let it go. Lift up the opposite foot so the right shin is now parallel with the ceiling, and let it go. Keeping a neutral spine, lift up both shins. And if any time you feel your spine rounding out, back off a level and return to a neutral spine. So if you're looking for more, perhaps release the hands. Maybe looking for a little more, straighten the legs. And maybe a little more, lift the arms up to the sky and breathe. And as I'm broadcasting to you from Iowa, I feel I would be remiss if I did not mention that Betty Bang Mather used to have her students play Tafanel Gobert daily exercise number four in boat pose. Take one more breath and release. Hug in, hug your arms around the shins, roll back on the mat, give yourself a nice spinal massage. Rolling forwards and back or perhaps side to side, then release the legs one at a time to the front of the mat. Take the arms overhead and a nice supine full body stretch. Feeling length in the front body and all the way from toes to fingertips. Rolling to prone, place the weight in your forearms. Forearms are parallel. The elbows are directly beneath the shoulders. Tops of the feet are down behind you. Gazing out, maybe a foot in front of the mat in Sphinx pose. Just a, a mild back bend, but draw the tailbone towards the heels. Then take the hands, cross them in front of you, lay the head on top of the hands. Then take the arms out to the sides. Inhaling, peel up in a mini back bend, leading with the sternum, gazing just at the top of the mat. Perhaps you'll want to grab your towel here and walk the hands in towards each other using the towel, opening up the heart just a little more. Perhaps you can clasp the fingers or even draw the palms of the hands into each other, lifting the legs, engaging the quads, the legs, lifting the shins, pointing the toes into locus salambasana. Or perhaps Bring the arms out in front, and you are super flutist. Then bring the hands back, lower the head to the hands, draw the soles of the feet to the sky with the knees bent, windshield wiper the legs, neutralizing the spine after this back bend. From here, roll back over, return to seated facing the other side of the mat. So the bum will be up, bum will be positioned maybe two thirds of the way back. Legs are out in front, perhaps walk the flesh off the sit bones into staff pose, sitting up tall. One at a time, bend the knees, take your peace fingers and Take them around the big toe, or perhaps take the towel and take them underneath the balls of the feet. Little by little, coming forward, just like when we were standing, keeping the core engaged with the thighs, getting a little bit of a hamstring stretch, finding the hamstring stretch that suits you. As with any pose in yoga, let the pose serve you instead of you serving the pose. It's your practice, use it to your advantage. If it feels fine in the hamstrings, extend the legs all the way out. Whatever extension you have, inhale to extend the spine, and then exhale 
to roll over on top of the legs, finding a nice hamstring stretch and perhaps a low body stretch, letting the mind cool. If you've been engaging in ujjayi breath, we are in the cool down portion. Continue to breathe in and out through the nose with the core engaged, but release the ujjayi breath. Walk the hands up the legs. Adjusting the seat so that the right heel comes back by the right hip. The sole of the left foot will come to the top of the right thigh. Sitting up tall in deer pose, tent the fingers, and then walk them off to the left and breathe, getting a nice spinal twist towards the end of the practice, feels so good. Unwind and reverse the feet. The left foot will go by the left hip, the sole of the right foot will go on top of the left thigh, tenting the fingers, and just walk yourself off to the right, to the twist that suits you. Unwinding, bring that left knee in front so that now the, the left heel is by the right hip and then shoelace the right leg over top so that the knees are on top of each other. The feet may be very wide on the mat or perhaps you can draw the soles of the feet in towards your hips. Again, whatever suits you. You may find it helpful to have a towel Take the towel on both hands, hands over head, elbows above the head. Leave the elbows next to the head, drop the hands behind. Sweep the hand around, grab the towel. And I'll show you, I'll just rotate and show you in the back. Grabbing the towel and perhaps walk the hands close together. Keeping that top arm by the head Perhaps you can clasp the fingers here, feeling a nice stretch in the belly of the top arm and the outer triceps of the bottom arm. And release, switch sides. So now the right foot is down and the left knee is on top. It might be different on the other side. Take that towel, ears are up by the head, drop the towel. Sweep the arm around and grabbing the towel, walk the hands in towards each other, finding a nice clasp in the fingers perhaps. Keeping the core engaged, just breathe. finding your way to the mat you might want to keep the towel nearby but just rolling down onto the mat one vertebra at a time take the soles of the feet together with the knees bent splay the knees out to the sides perhaps just lightly resting the hands on the inner thighs into recline bound angle or supta baddha konasana just feeling a nice hip opener here right towards the end of the practice feeling your back pressing into the mat, the head pressing into the mat. And take the hands to the outer thighs, draw the knees together. One at a time, release the feet to the front of the mat, letting the feet splay out. The arms are long by the body. Hands are down for more grounding or up for more energy. Feel free to blink the eyes closed. If you have the towel handy, you can place that over top of the eyes and let yourself fall into a lovely yoga sleep shavasana. 
Immerse yourself in the rapture of music. You know what you love. Go there. Tend to each note, each chord, rising up from silence and dissolving again. Vibrating strings draw us into the spacious resonance of the heart. The body becomes light as the sky, and you, one with the great musician, who is, even now, singing us into existence. Just rest here, enjoy your savasana. I'll bring you out in a little bit. Returning awareness to your breath, taking in deep belly breaths. Perhaps finding some micro movements in the fingers and toes, giving them a wiggle. Rotating the wrists and the ankles one direction, and then the next. One at a time. Draw each knee into the chest. If you have any congestion in your nose, roll off to the opposite side, resting your head in your arm into fetal position. Shavasana loosely translates as corpse pose and coming into fetal position signals the rebirth, the renewal after the practice. Placing the weight into your forearms, gently and mindfully come to seated. You may wish to bring your cushion or the blocks back to the mat for the final breath practice. In this breath practice, we will be doing Nadi Shodhana. Nadi Shodhana essentially is about bringing balance to the body. You may have heard this referred to as alternate nostril breathing. There are many ways of breathing and doing this practice of Nadi Shodhana. I will just take an easy route. Place the left hand on top of the left knee, up or down, doesn't matter. Taking the right hand, 
bring your fingers forward into kind of a scout's honor and then just place those fingers on your brow just above the eyebrows extending the other th three fingers take the ring finger and thumb and take them from the top ridge of the nose and bring it down to where you can no longer breathe. So not all the way down to the nostrils. Removing the right thumb, take an inhale. Replace the right thumb, let go with the left ring finger. Exhaling out the left side, then inhaling the left side. Replace the left ring finger and exhale out the thumb side. And continue this practice, alternating sides, inhaling the right, exhaling left, lengthening, keeping equal length in the breaths. If at any time you feel dizzy or uncomfortable during this sequence, simply return the right hand to the knee and engage in natural breathing, Sahaj breath. If it feels good, blink the eyes closed. The next time you exhale out the right side of your nose, return your right hand to the knee. Bring the hands to heart center. Perhaps recall your intention for this practice. Thank you so much for showing up and sharing your practice with me this morning. Thank you very much to the National Flute Association for all the incredible work that went to putting on this practice, um, to putting on this convention and making it so that everyone around the world can experience it. And finally, thanks to Rosalind McPhail for her beautiful music. The Light in Me, the teacher in me and the student in me recognizes and appreciates the light in each and every one of you, the teacher in you and the student in you. To close the practice, we bow and say namaste.